first we have to start with um, Davy's toughest team. Where like I, I'm loving it, right? I, I'd be straight up. I, I, I like the lads on it are, are such characters. Where did the idea come for you to make this kind of TV show? Like, I suppose at the start of, or sorry, the end of every year we discuss how fit his family goes. We sit down with the production company and we have a chat, right? And um, we see if we have any new ideas. And this is kind of something I've had in my head. And in fairness to the production company, like they loved it. Like they loved the idea of it and um, the thoughts of helping that age group. And it, it just expanded in chats over a few weeks. And um, I just feel lads, that that age group probably, they're just lacking that small bit of direction and that small bit of help. And um, it all started from there. I didn't expect what I got. I can fucking tell you that. But <laughs> it was unreal. <laughs> The, the thing looking at is some some of the lads you can tell have a sporting background and they seem like we look at here like we look at the local lads in care and stuff like that and, and when they're playing sport at least they seem to have an outlet I think it's the the, the boys and girls at that age who aren't you know don't have sport as an outlet can can really get lost I think sport helps and then if you're not in that sporting atmosphere I think that's 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 where trouble well, comes I remember on episode 2 Davey you kind of said that w- when you struggled in school and you were younger that hurling Hurling kind of almost saved yeah. you, would you say? Listen, lads, it's it's your passion that gets you gets you out of trouble. Um, it's to go to that place that you know you can go to, whatever space it is. Um, I was lucky it was hurling, but man, and I was very lucky because, like, when you're being picked on, it isn't nice. And um, to be able to get that hurling and ball, go against the wall, and think you're anyone, like you, you're just thinking you're this player and that player, and you forget about stuff, and you're able to go and. That was so good, and that's I, I'm always on to young kids about dreams. Don't don't let people tear up your dreams, and and if you do come under pressure, go back to your dreams and start trying to live them out as best you can, or just imagine them things, and don't let anyone take them away from you. It, it, it's so important that like there's enough of negativity around. Fuck that. Let's mm. just well, let's stay with things as much as possible. You know. One one thing we thought when we were watching is like some some of these lads have come from like tough situations and do you know we be trying to get into the old television game as well now, Davy. We be trying to see what's going on, like. But <laughs> we were we were thinking it, it's like you took on a lot yourself. You know, you took on a big role in it because if if it was us, we'd have been saying, "Jesus, I don't know what to say." We'll get in an addiction counselor. We'll get in this person or that person. You know, like it's a scary proposition, Davy. You took a lot on yourself. Yeah, no, listen, I did have backup behind the scenes as well. Like, we, we okay. had counsellors to talk to the lads as well. Like, um, we were careful enough about how we did it. Like, um, I suppose I've been in management for over 30 years, boys, believe it or not. And um, a lot of them years ago, I got a fair wrong. Um, I thought my way was the best way. I thought I knew it all. And then what I began to understand was try and understand the person and get the best out of the person. We're all different. And as soon, as soon as I figured out how things started to happen a lot more for me is understand the person. And we're all different. So we all have different things that make us tick. And I think that's the biggest thing you can do with anyone is try and understand them. If you look at the show, like we brought around a few situations that we knew would pressurize them and we thought we'd get a reaction. Because I just wanted to see how they'd be when they come under pressure. Because that's when you see the true being. That's when you treat the, when you see the true self is when you're put under that pressure, what way will you react? And that's what I wanted to see with him. And, and I got to see that. And that's that was how I hope to make gains is get him to look back. Let's get him to think about what's after happening. And let's see, can we do something? Um, but I'll tell you, lads, being honest, I did appreciate the help I got from others as well on that show. Like that probably isn't seen like because mm. um, no one person can solve it all. That's for definite. Yeah. Well, one thing we, we couldn't help but notice was that uh, we know you've had some heart trouble yourself. You, did you have some stints in yeah. there? Um, ju- just, I was watching episode oh, two there a while ago and twice you sat down and had a fry up, Davey. No, <laughs> I thought, and yeah. I couldn't, even one of the lads said it to you, this is not the healthiest thing. Like, <laughs> What's going on? Are, are you very I, conscious about the health now? Or? You look at myself and smacks, we probably have that in common so we do we <laughs> Andy, <a> rubbish. <laughs> Andy, Andy. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, 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 do you know what? I've taken now... I reckon it's okay to have a fry once you get the glass of milk with it. You know I, mean? I, think, I think that's the main thing. It just neutralises the Vitamins, lad. Um, i tell you what, lockdown did. Listen, um, it was grand when I was training all the way up along. You're going seven days a week and you're out in the field and you're running around. The minute you stopped, then um, 
that stuff piles on the weight in you. Mm. And like when you're training teams and if you're doing it properly, I believe you're giving 110%. You're, you're absolutely shattered. You're, you're not able to do that much yourself. And I was taking sugar hits where I could get it. I was yeah, eating every yeah. junk. And you see that. That was last, when you saw them fries, believe it or not, boys, that was last um, January, okay, between January Jeez. and February, yeah. um, coming into March. I'd say from March on, I've been pretty I've been pretty decent on what I do. Will I have a fry every now and again? I will, but yeah, yeah. as much, definitely not. Yeah. Um, like, I went to 14 stone 12. Thankfully, I think I'm, I went to back to 12, 12. I'm back up around 13, 6 at the moment. So I got to get them few pounds off again, you know? You're, you're, um, you're, you're, you're fit and raring to go. I'm at lads, you, you have to live a bit as well, I right? Know, so, I know, I know, I know. I think, I think that the thing is, that word, a bit of balance. Yeah. Uh, I think is the thing, all right? Is to find that balance. But there's no balance with me. Fuck it, I just go mad. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll just tear into it. Huh? And, and, and just just talking with the boys that, that, that have been in this show, I mean... Obviously, when the, when this interview goes out, the the finishing the the last episode is on that night. So, what what can we expect from the lads? And and in the future, like, have you put plans in place? Are you still chatting to the boys? Like, I mean, I seen with a lot of them, they don't really have an outlet. They don't have a job. I mean, I I, I know myself when I when I was going mad when I was younger, I was lucky. I always had some bit of a job and I had a few pound anyway to to do stuff I wanted to do. Like, ha, ha, have you put in place for these boys or what way are they like set up now? That's that's actually it's a fair point that you've made, right? And I'm gonna I'm gonna explain it all to you. One, like listen, these boys have had no jobs, right? Now whether that's their own fault, um, or other circumstances, right? They've had none. And you know, if you've such an amount of time, free time in your head, like that's not good. That's not good. And it was the one thing that we tried to encourage them from day one, whether it be get, get out and do some exercise or whatever, right? Now luckily I've had two or three companies get on to me and offer the boys apprenticeships um Brilliant. so i have so we're in the middle of tying up two or three of them at the moment right now when we finished the show last august right we give them x amount of stuff to do my thing with them was i wanted to let them off in their own right i i held her hand for x amount of time the production company held her hand for so long you can do that unless you have the conviction to go and start it out yourself mm. a davy fitz or any one of our team is not going to start you out you have to want to do this yourself even seeing the banter last night and the text, I seen their text last night, like they have a little group, right? <laughs> yeah. And um, the production team is showing me the text. These guys are so much different to what they were a year and a bit ago. You would not believe it. Yeah. There's yeah. one or two of them wouldn't say boot you. The difference in them, and they were saying it themselves last night, that they feel like different people. And if that, if we achieve that with a few of them, I'll tell you one thing. Whatever about a fucking TV show, this is yeah. worth doing. It's worth doing. Like, I'll be honest with you, I love the hurling and I love winning. I, there's no doubt about that. You know what type of fucker I am, right? Yeah, we've, we've but, witnessed you, Davey, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you love me and tip, don't you? <laughs> Man, you're, you're up over the mantelpiece with, with the sacred heart, Davey, so you are by now. No, I, I'm over the mantelpiece with the dark. <laughs> 100, 180. <laughs> but yeah. lo- looking on at this TV show now, the Wexford boys must be getting jealous, are they? <laughs> the Wexford guys, you you've been down with us Max you know what them guys are like I know they're a um, very like, tough training uh, uh, discipline group yeah. well listen they're, um, they're a unique bunch I absolutely love them to bits um, I've probably I didn't expect to stay as long as I have with them but you know what they're good people they're they're loyal they're, they're, they're just salt of the earth like I couldn't speak enough about them and I really really love it and I think the night you were down at mm. the the fitness superstars do we had, um, yeah. like you you could tell with the lads like they have the crack like I don't want the fucking hurling team to be all hype and pressure pressure shouldn't come into hurling yeah it should be go out and express yourself and let fucking go and let's see what happens and that's what we tried to do whether it be sing songs have the crack let's do it and I kind of find that I find I found that with the with the Wexford guys and uh, I'm enjoying it. Like obviously, I was I was down at the this fit superstars, and to meet the lads, like they're so they're so outgoing. They do seem so normal, and from talking to them, you know what I mean. They have 
They sound like they go through all few. So what I want to know is, right, I, I want to be a manager someday when me and Johnny can nicely retire and we can, you know, <laughs> set up our own club if we have to, if yeah. they won't let us in you down know, below. Once we've had a couple of shows on RTE and we're on the big box, you know, we've had a Sunday evening show, all that kind of stuff. So what's your point, Johnny? My point is, how, how do you, when you come in, Dave, you're right, to this group of whatever, 40 lads in the dressing room, how do you immediately just win them over? Because it was clear to see, I was at the Leinster final when you won and the whole lot. And I'd say, if that match was still going on now, those boys still be running around and dying in their boots how do you just win them over immediately because obviously you're not from Wexford you know what I mean so you're coming in almost as an outsider like. I think I think number one you have to be straight up and honest with them when I came in from day one I I called it as I saw it with them I actually told them what I thought I told them what the story was um, I told them that we'd have to work extremely hard but also I felt one of the most important thing was was that we'd have to enjoy each other's companies I wanted no fucking superstars I just want an honest bunch that care where they're from, they care about Wexford, but they care about each other and would we'll just go out in the field. I don't want, like, I, I have giant captains always, right? I don't believe in one leader. I believe in an amount of leaders. I love an amount of leaders. I love being in it together. Um, if a fellow's having a bad day, someone else will go over and tap him and say, come on, we'll be grand. Let's stay with it. Um, I love that family feeling. That's kind of what I love. And, I tried to instill that in them. Um, and I think it's also important to surround yourself with great coaches and great people. Like our kit man, incredible. <laughs> Absolutely one of the most important. I bet him. We have a fellow of 82. <laughs> yeah, we have a fellow of 82 years of age that carries the water. He, You would not think he's 82, but he's the life and soul of the place. He's fucking great crack. It's the characters you have around, I think is important that they are able to express themselves and it feels like a good place to be. If it feels like a good place to be and you're on a winner, that's what I believe, you know. And as I said, Tom, there'll be ups and downs. You're going to get the highs, like the highs are high, but the fucking lows are low, I yeah. can tell you. Like, and um, once you stick together, you have a chance to do an anthem. That's my belief, guys. I I never worried about whether you're playing a Kilkenny, a Tip or a Cork. I don't ever worry about that because I believe if you go out and you're as honest as you can be, Believe in yourself. You have two arms, two legs. Let's let's go to battle, boy. Let's go to war. Now, on people, matter where you're people from. say you're too strategic, David. Look, <laughs> <laughs> two arms, yeah. two legs, boy. Not we go. <laughs> yeah, um, that's what we do. Uh, w- one thing we all definitely agree about you is your high energy, Davy. And I have to admire the power of your vocal cords. There's times I think you should have been a singer in a rock band or something. <laughs> Because uh, I'd be on the upper Cusack and I can hear you. But there's a uh, look, some of the stuff ha- has been well documented. Like um, yourself and John Milan ha- had a famous exchange on the field. But when you're on the sideline or when you're playing, is being vocal, is, is, that a, is that a tool you use to psych yourself up or psych the lads up or what's going on there? I'd say if we took a 75 minute match, I'd love to see how vocal I was for the 75 minutes. I bet you'd be under 10 minutes, well under. Um, and you'd find it hard to believe, but that's the truth. RT, as you well know, guys, will pick the bits they want to pick, and that's fine. Yeah. I've no problem with that. If that's the character they want to portray, if you ask maybe Lee Chen, Matthew O'Hanlon, what it's actually like in Wexford for most of the time, I'd say they'll tell you 95% of the time the way I'm talking now is the way I am. When I have to go out to the well and go out to war, we're going to war. That's it. If I think I can get an advantage by doing something. Yeah. That famous day below where I got the two month suspension against Tipperary, right? Yeah. I a hundred percent deserve I one hundred percent deserved it. Um did I know what I was doing? hundred percent because if you're playing a team like Tip and they get a smelly on they're on top of you and they put a few scores on the board, they're not going to just beat you by five or ten points. They're going to absolutely annihilate you. And I, I admire that about them. And I was looking at that in front of my eyes and I'm saying, oh, fuck. <laughs> like, what can we do here? And if I could stop the game right now, <laughs> I managed to do it. But if you look at me walking off, if you really looked at it, you wouldn't see there wasn't, there wasn't cross, I wasn't cross. I knew it. I, I knew I was fucked. Yeah. I had to try and change the momentum. Like. I, I, it's just changing momentum. There's different times you have to do different things. Um, and you, you learn a lot as you get older. And I won't make any apologies. Whatever it takes for my team to get over the line by, like, if I can help Wexford or I help Claire get, do something, fucking fair enough. If you get some player John back at you, fucking brilliant. That's great. <laughs> yeah. He's he's gone. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. gone. I remember it happened in a Limerick game one day. They were beating us by six or seven points. And this fella came out to the sideline and he fucking hit me a shoulder and he started jawing me and I started at him. 
Yeah. So he didn't poke a ball for the rest of the game. It was great. It was yeah. so fascinating with me. It was brilliant. You know? <laughs> well, one story from, from your book I absolutely loved is when you were over Clare and you were playing Cork down in Cork and there was a bit of a schmozzle. Okay, I, I won't do it justice. Will you tell our listeners this one, Davey? Ah, oh, that was that was actually funny. As that was, um, <laughs> and it's very it's very unlike Cork to get caught. Like, very unlike it. Um, unlike them, we were we were down about six pints below on Parky Rain on a Saturday night. Big crowd there, and fuck it, they, they got the best of us in the first half. Like, and um, I'm just thinking to myself at halftime, what can we do, fucking here? Like, what can we do here? And I remember, I think just Patrick Horgan hit Donna Donovan. Uh, it was a dirty enough clip on the way in, like, but nothing crazy, like, you know. So I was walking in, I went up to Dunny, and I knew there was a few car players beside him. I said, Dunny, you have my full fucking permission to do whatever you want to do in the second half. If it means you have to break something, break it. I said, well, the car players start to lose it. Because I, I said it loud enough so they'd hear it, right? So then, Jerry Barry and a few of their management heard that, and they went ballistic, right? So they started a confrontation with me, and... Oh, it got fairly rough, but I can remember, I think it was Johnny Crowley, right? And I remember looking at him and thinking to myself, lads, if he gets a go at me, I'm fucked. You know, <laughs> shell of a dog. Like, he's a big lad. And Johnny said to me, right, he said to me, he said, you're all cock, you've not to back it up, of course, you're fucked. So what did I do? I just fucking stuck out the hand and pushed him away. Uh, but I was happy enough there was a few clear guys around there. <laughs> <laughs> but there was absolute mayhem now. Like how Kirk got involved in me and the up six points, I don't know. But before I went into the dressing room, I just caught my shirt and I ripped it <laughs> myself. And before I went in, well, I went in and I fucked it. I said, lads, I'm after fucking defending you outside there for the last 10 minutes. <laughs> so I said, I have to fight with him. You've done nothing outside there for the last half an hour. I said, are you going to let him walk down on top of you? <laughs> We went out and we won by six. Oh, yeah. so, <laughs> Rip, I, ripping your own shirt, but that's the new one. Davy, I'm after taking note of yeah, that note. Care Miners next year. Rip shirt <laughs> at half time. Yeah. But listen, does that stuff work out? No, it won't work all the time. Like, mm. if you're in a situation where you know things are going bad, you're trying to think of anything. Mm. Might be change formation or X, Y, and Z. And you'd actually do, like, even with Wexford now, they've got that place where. I don't even tell them what formations or what to do anymore. They'll just fucking change them up themselves. Like they know if something's going bad, they'll try and change it up. And um, it, I, I'll just tell you, lads, it doesn't always go right. Like uh, I take yeah. the Ireland semi final against Tip last year. Like, would I have regrets? One hundred and ten percent. If I got another chance, so I do things a small bit different. Yeah. Um, you look back and you have to keep learning, guys. Fuck, you have to keep learning. And uh, one thing we've ended up talking about here sometimes is that hurling a GA. Maybe since back when you were playing, you've seen the change. Has it gone a bit too serious in terms of what guys have been asked to do in terms of training, food, you know, don't be out drinking, all this kind of stuff? Like? I, I put it this way, like in our club, we're junior hurling, senior football. And if you look at our senior football team, they look like a fucking inter-county team. There's nobody... Well, they don't play like one. Yeah, they don't play like one. But, they, they, you know, they, they're all big, muscly guys who look after themselves. <laughs> Um, no, no, but that, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying, Davey? In terms of like the gym work, the training, and, and especially people from the outside maybe have an opinion like, oh, Davey Fitz, I bet his training is hardcore now. I bet it's extreme. I bet the lads, I bet they don't have a drink one end of the year to the other. And this kind of perception is out there of you and your training, you know? Yeah, um, training will be tough with me at times, right? Um, but I was shut of it I believe that word balance is important. Um I'll often say to the lads in the middle of the training and we'll be in the middle of a two-hour session I might say to them, okay, belt me out the best song you have and I'll let you off the rest of the training. <laughs> oh my God. I go in. One of the... One oh, of we've done that. <laughs> we've done that loads of times, right? And I swear to God, the one thing I love about the Wexford lads, like we'd normally sing a tune most days before we go out play any match. And I love... I want to kind of... Yeah. Where I've gone to with the whole hurling thing is fucking be in good form. Be free spirit. Go out and fucking let's do it. And they'll tell you that. Like, that's, we have some crack. Like, like they had a quiz there Sunday night now. Um, I was in the background looking at it. I wanted to see what it'd be like. <laughs> crack they had. And the, the people at last had to do X amount of challenges yesterday. Oh, my uh, Jesus. What, it was unreal. What songs? If I showed would be, you the home videos. <laughs> Davey, what songs would be sang most often at training? Well, uh, you could do anything. Like, they, they so, um, Anything comes out. Sweet Caroline comes out. The purple and gold comes out. Anything yeah. could come out. They'll come up with modern stuff. 
you're like we have a music man and trainer, right? So we've um we, Mark Fanning was our first guy in charge of the music. He got sacked. The boys <laughs> came in to me one night and they said, Listen, we gotta fucking sack Fanning for the crack. <laughs> so I said, guys, I was in the middle of a, a big team talk, right? So we're playing someone and I said, Oh, I said we leave the team talk now for a sec, we've a more pressing issue. I said, <laughs> one or two guys have come to me. I said, they're not happy with who's the lad in charge of the music. And Fanning said, what are you on about? I said, Fanning, we have to put this to a vote. <laughs> so we had a vote there and then to sack him. And we sacked him, right? And I asked them who did they want to do it. And they picked a guy called Shin Rick, who was one of the quietest guys in the team, right? Yeah. Oh, my God, did he stand up to the challenge. So he has to bring the speaker every place. He has to pick the music that we have. And... Oh, if man. you see the crack at times that they go on with, like they're just a funny bunch. <laughs> like, and that to me is to get that balance between that serious stuff and also feeling good about what you're doing. I think that's important. And um, they have allowed me to explore that more. The Wexford guys have allowed me to explore it more. They're not afraid. They don't take themselves serious when it comes to stuff like that. Yeah. Let's have the crack. And the, 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 that, that Declan Ernie song, what's it? Stop the world. <laughs> yeah. They are. They are they are unbelievable. I swear to God, guys, I, it's it's hilarious. You know? What do you and, sing before you go out in the pitch? Would you be singing in Croke Park? Um, every place, yeah. any place. Like our physio brings the guitar with him. <laughs> if you look at us every day, our physio has the guitar going with him. That's um, brilliant. But why not? Like, yeah, why not? Like, why does it need to be all tense and all? You have to do this, and you have to do that. And yeah. You can have a mix of both. Like, why not have a mix of both? Now, it took me a long time to realize this. I just want lads to go out. There's enough of pressures in life, guys, without adding hurling to it. Mm. There's enough of pressures. And if a team gives me 110% fine, if they don't trust me, they'll find out about it afterwards. We don't fucking All sing afterwards. <laughs> we fucking, sing, fucking far from singing, I'll tell you that. Boy. Break the guitar off his head. <laughs> Well, we've left a few impressions inside the dressing rooms, I'll tell you that. But I'd love to be going advice, to get, is, the, the next time Wexford have a, a team night out, can we come? Right, so he, the other <laughs> fellow knows what it's like, you're welcome the next time, but you wouldn't get off your ass and come down and join us for the fit of superstars the last time, that was a problem. I was at a wedding that night, but I... <laughs> How are you? All right. You were you you jaunting. Yeah, no, I ended up at, at a Wexford team that out in Dublin once by accident, Davy, but sure they'll advise to tell you about that another night. I <laughs> <laughs> hey, look as long as I get 110% out of every fella, Davy, I was happy enough on the night out. You know? When you're out <laughs> When on, you're out, you're on, out. Davy, before yeah. we before we finish, we have to ask you about Fitz family and did, yeah. it's, it's obviously been devised by yourself and, and, and a buddy of yours like what did you see like s something similar or where did that concept come from for, for Fitz family because it's been a massive hit like we're looking around care now like trying to trying to rate what family would win it locally like if they were to yeah. enter and stuff <laughs> like that where, 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 where did it spring from um, myself and Jim Sexton our um, guy in Shannon He's a good friend of mine. He's in the entertainment business. But we, we were having coffee over in Shannon one morning and we were talking about, remember superstars that used to be on yeah. years and Pat years Spillane ago? Yeah, and all um, that stuff back Pat in the day. Yeah. Jack O'Shea, all them mm. guys would have been in it. And we're talking about that and we're just saying, wouldn't it be great if we'd something where a family, like the most important thing in life is your family, where the family could actually do something. And we're saying, well, if you did something like that, like then you'd get every viewership you'd have from young to old, Lo would love something like that and they, we just started writing down stuff and concepts and we spent hours writing it down and we got a meeting with RT right through a friend of ours and um, like normally it's hard to get one side you know yourself so it's, it's tough to break in there right <laughs> and your man your man said he'd give us 10 minutes we were still there an hour and 45 minutes later and I remember walking out of it and he said there's the name of a few production companies go talk to him he said I'll hear that all day long he said and that never happens, we were told. Yeah. And um, I remember being told also, they said, you'll probably get maybe two or two years if you're lucky out of it. We've ate done. And I'm so proud. I, I'm so proud of the production company, the film crew. Like, you know yourself when you're filming. You, you need to have a crew with you that buys in. Yeah. And if you have that crew with you, the film crew, the sound guys, the production crew, if you have all them buying in with you, it makes life an awful lot easier. And the atmosphere up there is always brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. And you've won this year at long last. It's been a long time coming, Davy, with with the with the um, 
with the Mahoney's How do you know that guys that's the normal from, knows that on Sunday hey there you go boy there you go inside track from RT but uh you, you like yeah yeah but you proper like you proper want to win like this isn't just for TV like you want to beat those beat those others like no, no way about guys guys let's, let's be straight about something now right if I sat down playing marbles with you or if I play <laughs> cards with you or play anything right I play cards every third night I've said that well with my mother you should be down in our house guys <laughs> Back and mental. So it is. And a few people come and join us every now and again. And um, trust me, you'd want to have your helmet on when you're coming in. <laughs> um, if, if I lose that, guys, we might as well forget about it. Yeah. Um, I, I know I'm not the perfect person, but the one thing I want to be competitive, um, I think I have a soft, I, I would have a soft center at the end of it. Like I'd like, I like seeing people happy. I, um, so I do. Do I make mistakes? I do, guys. One hundred and ten percent. Like you two fellas, I make mm. mistakes a good bit as well. Yeah. Well, we're oh, still and, we're um, waiting for our first one now. <laughs> any day. <laughs> okay, Davy. A couple of quick ones before you go. What's the future hold for yeah. Davy Fitz? Um, okay, what do I really want? Um, I'll tell you straight out. Number one is I want my my family to stay healthy as long as possible. Myself, healthy and getting out to enjoy every day is the most important thing for me. Right. If we can win a bit of silver and we're with the old hurling in the meantime, great. And um, I, I just want to see more negativity gone out of this world. I, I have enough of it. Um, in Ireland, sometimes we have a, a habit of always knocking people. Stop knocking people. Let's just get on with things and take care of our own lives and go out and have the crack. That's that's where I'd like to see things going. I, I can see... Davy Fitz getting into politics. Do you know that? Oh yeah. I'd love to see you above in the door now, being like, no, be, Donnelly, I'd, I'd come on, more fucking vaccines, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd like to see a few more of them rolled out. Yeah. Right, you know, um, like I can. We, I, I'm going. I'm going to take the vaccine. By the way, it's it's. But I just want to. I take it right now if they give oh, it. Oh, under hundred percent. Into a pint of milk with the vaccine. Oh, yeah. down. <laughs> oh we'll have the milk at the side. I might leave the fry out. <laughs> sausage, the eggs, the rashers. Ah. Davy, advice for a seventeen-year-old, Davy Fitz. One, just be true to yourself. Work extremely hard, um, and always follow your dreams, man. Like. Even when you get knocked and everybody gets knocked, don't stop. And if you get knocked again, come back again. No matter who tries to put you down, if you believe hard enough, you will get there. No matter what stories, I really believe that in my heart. You will get there if you just keep with things. You were part of a fair, clear team back in your day now. And I have yeah. my Tipperary 1997 jersey hanging on the wall here because I, I, I'm still o- I'm not over it. If the Clare team at 95 were to play the Limerick team at 2020, how would it go? Well, for one, they're completely two different teams, right? Like our, our Clare team would have been probably very direct. Uh, we would have had a lot of power. I think the game has just changed so much, guys. Yeah. Like to me, we probably we would have been very one-dimensional in 95. It was get the ball and hit the ball, right? Yeah. Um, and back then, that was great. But the game has moved on now. And in fairness to Limerick, they're... They are ahead of everyone at the moment. And um, I love the variety in their play. I'm all for variety. Short, long, shoot from distance, get in close, shoot. Um, it, so it would be very hard to answer that because I just believe they're two different eras. Um, so I do what I was shouting about. I'd like to think we get stuck into hey, you fuck it Come on, that's very a good one here. I, I, I'll fucking tell you one thing, Davy. Those Limerick lads know they're in a game. <laughs> I want to see Anthony Daly. Yeah, Mark and Keane Lynch. Though. Come on now, let's fucking have it. Oh, there'll be some matchups. Let's let's get the matchups in our yeah. head exactly what we like. Yeah, Liam Dyle and Tom Morrissey. Yeah, yeah. who are we putting Gerard Hagerty? I'd nearly love Baker to be on him. Like, yeah. if Baker <laughs> match him size for size, we'd have some crack. All right, so uh, to be to be good that way. Oh, then man. you have Aaron Gillan probably in the full forward line. We put Brian Lohan on him, smother him. We'd, yeah, I think we do okay. We give it a battle, all right. So we would, you know. Jeez, you nearly have the thing one now already. Yeah, he's yeah. the one. You see, there you go. You uh, you've got you into my head now. There, there we are. <laughs> there's now. Hey, Davy, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks a fucking million for doing it.